So the learning outcomes for this um, uh, presentation, after the end of the presentation, I uh, would like everyone to be able to define what is uh, club food, to know a bit of epidemiology uh, of uh, club food even in our own setting, to understand a bit of the etiology and pathophysiology of the, of the condition, and how to make the diagnosis, how to classify, to treat, and also to um, appreciate some of the complications that come uh, with uh, treatment of the, of, the, of the condition. So, in terms of definition, uh, uh, club food is also known as a con congenital talipes equinovirus, which in simple layman's term, um, that is present at birth and it is recognized by a foot that is uh, uh, pointed down, rotated inwards or turned inwards. So the acronym CAV uh, is used to uh, describe the deformity and it is also uh, used in, in uh, managing the deformity. So essentially the hind foot is in epinus that is pointed downwards and uh, it is also in varus and the midfoot is in adduction, it covers, as well as uh, the forefoot that is uh, AD ducted. So that uh, picture there uh, is just to show some of the variants or variations uh, of club foot or differential diagnosis of club foot. By far, the most commonest is the talipes equinovirus that we are, that we are going to discuss today but uh, that is just to illustrate that there can be other types or forms uh, of, uh, of club food. So in terms of epidemiology, it is a fairly common uh, condition with uh, an incidence overally or uh, globally of uh, between one and two uh, per 1,000 life births. Uh, the incidence is highest in Hawaiians and Maoris, where it can reach up to up as far as uh, 6.9 uh, per thousand life births. But it is important to note that 80% of uh, children born with uh, congenital equinus, uh, talipes equinovirus, are okay in low to middle income countries. The lowest incidence, however, is found in the Chinese. Um, and in the Zimbabwean incident, according to Madhuri Tao, who conducted a, a retrospective study at a, a, a major referral center, was as found to be 0 0.9 in 1,000. Then in terms of male to female ratio, uh, males are affected twice as much as females. This does not mean that, that uh, it is a sex-linked disorder but it is uh, uh, due to what is known as the Carter effect, where the female require um, a mode uh, of the genes for, for them to express uh, the condition, but it's not really sex-linked. Sex and it is also important to note uh, in half of the cases, the uh, club foot is, is bilateral. Uh, for the types of club foot, uh, they are essentially divided into typical and uh, atypical uh, club food. Uh, so the typical club food is the one that is found in otherwise normal infants, and it generally is uh, easier to correct. Uh, and this can happen with uh, with five casts or in and around five casts. And the long-term outcome with uh, concert management is uh, good to excellent. And for typical club foot, it can be sub uh, divided into positional club foot, which is uh, present at birth, and uh, it is not really a true club foot, which is thought to be uh, a result of uh, intrauterine uh, uh, crowding, and um, uh, it usually co corrects with uh, one or two cars. Then, uh, if uh, it's uh, the typical club foot is uh, delayed in terms of being treated, that is beyond six months of age, then it is a term to delay treated club foot. Then recurrent typical club foot occurs when uh, uh, 
the typical club food is treated, but then there are relapses. The, the relapses can be due to incorrect um, uh, or improper uh, technique in the in the in, in the concert management uh, or incorrect bracing, as we shall discuss later. Then, uh, alternatively, treated club food uh, other methods could have been used that are apart from the concert. Um, maybe surgical or other uh, methods like the, 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 the French or the kite. And for a typical club food, this one is usually associated with other problems uh, and uh, correction uh, of this um, type of club food is usually more difficult. The subtypes of the atypical club food include the untreated or neglected typical uh, club food. So, if a patient uh, presents uh, two years uh, uh, without, uh, with, with their club food having not been treated, it's usually classified as untreated or neglected. Then a rigid or resistant club food, we shall discuss again, these, these, these are their slides uh, to discuss some of these ones. So we can move on to the, to the next one. So that one is a rigid or resistant club food. Uh, it is, um, uh, so, uh, uh, typically presents with a, uh, a crease on the deep posterior portion and also a transverse crease on the, on the sole of the feet, or, or also of the feet, so, and then uh, the, the fifth um, uh, metatarsal or the fifth toe is hyperextended and short is shown. And uh, Sometimes uh, it presents in thin patients or in, 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 in fat patients, but the outcome or the, the, the prognosis is, uh, is usually poor when it is uh, in uh, the, 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 the chubby uh, babies. Uh, it is usually difficult to correct. Then uh, neglected club food, as I mentioned, uh, if a patient presents uh, at the age of two years or more, uh, with untreated club food. This is typically how it presents and it is usually uh, because uh, people could have uh, failed to, make, to, to, to uh, diagnose the club food uh, early or they could have uh, presented late at the, uh, uh, at the hospital. So it's, it's two ways. Uh, either because of the patients failing to present at the, at, uh, for, for appropriate treatment or they would have presented, but then uh, the practitioners, for lack of uh, knowledge, would have failed to treat uh, the club food. So as you can see, it is a quite disfiguring. And the aim of this presentation is uh, to help us be able to make a diagnosis and to prevent uh, people presenting with neglected club food. Um, then for syndromic club food, uh, the picture on the left uh, is uh, showing um, a, 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 a baby with club foot associated with arthrogryposis. And then that one on the, on the right uh, is uh, a baby with club foot associated with um, um, spina meningomyelosim and spina bifid. So uh, syndromic club foot is, is club foot in a, in, a, in a patient with other syndromes. So there are, there are many syndromes that are associated with club foot, like the big with with men, um, um, the trisome 18, among many, many other syndromes. But in terms of uh, etiology, the real cause of uh, uh, Club food is not known, as you shall see uh, evidence by the ab abundance of uh, many theories that have been proposed. So from the very beginning, Hippocrates uh, proposed a mechanical uh, theory uh, postulating that he, club food uh, would result from a result, uh, would result from a raised intrauterine pressure, but uh, it has been disputed because of absence of increased incidence in multiple gestations, large babies, and polar adrenals, uh, or which would be normally associated with the increased intrauterine pressure. Then uh, the other theories uh, include 
that the neuromuscular theory where it has been proposed that there's an increase in the type one uh, 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 um, is to true muscle fiber, fiber, fiber ratio from one is to two to seven uh, is to one. But however, Iran did not observe uh, such abnormality. The histological theories is um, discussed by various authors. Uh, Lorraine found in abnormal peroneus gravis histology, and uh, Iran found a primary gem plus in defect, and uh, Shapiro and Clemacher are uh, defect uh, in cartilage. Uh, Ionic uh, collagen synthesis, and then Ippolito and Ponsetti. Uh, came up with the theory of restriction fibrosis of the distal muscles of the calf in supporting connective tissue. Uh, again, the anatomical theories, Ippolito uh, found out that there was medial angulation of the talar neck and medial tilting and rotation of the board of the talus. Uh, Hutnik et al found that there is hypoplasia of the anterior tibial artery and Teco and Porter found in anomalous, uh, anomalous muscles in 15% of the patients with club foot. Uh, the theory of arrested fetal development, um, uh, it was uh, uh, first described by von Volkman in 1863 uh, and uh, the foot found out that uh, it's actually. Uh, oh, sorry? Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, sorry for that. Uh, von Volkman found out actually that congenital cloud foot is in, um, a, a disorder or a deformation of. Uh, of um, of a normal development of the, of the foot. So in utero, the foot is normally in equine of arras, and this usually corrects to a pronated foot with birth arrest uh, due to an intrinsic error or environmental insult, uh, resulting in a failure of correction of the physiological position to, normal, uh, to a normal pronated foot. So that's the theory of, uh, of arrested um, um, fetal development. Then the consensus theory, uh, incorporates all the theories, and it is the one that probably best explains the occurrence of club foot. Um, we'll move on now to uh, to uh, factors that uh, point towards a genetic factor. So, genetic genetic factors are, have not been they have been implicated, but there's been no clear uh, mode of inheritance, but. Uh, Factors that point out to a genetic factor in congenital talipesecan of virus include uh, the fact that 25% of the cases have a, a positive family history. And uh, in about two and a half to six and a half percent, uh, there's uh, a chance, there's a uh, two and a half and to six and a half chance uh, of uh, a patient uh, getting club, being born with club foot if the sibling. Uh, uh, Yes, uh, club foot. And there's a 33% concordance uh, in monozygotic twins, uh, which decreases to 3% if it is uh, in dizygotic twins. And uh, there's, a, there's been a recent link to that transcription factor PITX1, uh, which are all points towards the genetic, genetic cause uh, etiology to, to uh, club foot. And for environmental factors, this is these have been found to be um, uh, uh, linked to congenital uh, or club foot. The maternal smoking uh, increases uh, the chance of uh, club foot by about 1.3 times. And then early amniocentesis, uh, that is a, in, the, in the period uh, 11 to 13 weeks of gestation, has also been associated with, uh, with club foot and low birth weight Maltenol alcohol consumption have all been linked to, 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 to club food. In terms of the pathophysiology and pathoanatomy, uh, 
uh, like here I mentioned earlier, it is a development or deformation. And uh, it has been uh, noted that um, they are thickened uh, ligaments and tendons and, uh, and capsule uh, due to excessive synthesis of, of, of collagen. And then the collagen uh, fibers, in terms of the arrangement, they've been found to be OFS as, as, as depicted by the, the, the pictures there, the, 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 the photomicrograph and the, and the, and the slide. Uh, and uh, they are small and short leg muscles as well. Uh, the, the, the thick, uh, sorry, the arrangement of the fibers into a wavy pattern, also known as crimp, is also uh, used uh, in terms of treatment because uh, it means the, the, the ligaments are easily deformable and they can also, um, uh, they can unpack, so to, so to speak. In terms of pathoanatomy, the tussle bones are in external flex, uh, in extreme flexion, adduction, and inversion. Then the talus is uh, severely plantar flexed, and um, the talus neck is medially and plantarly deflected, as depicted in that uh, in that photograph. The navicular is severely medially displaced, and the calcaneus is adducted and inverted under the talus. Uh, in terms of making a diagnosis, uh, it is chiefly a clinical uh, diagnosis. Uh, and uh, when you uh, uh, encounter a patient with a club foot, you need to check a thorough history, including prenatal and family history, and then do a, a, a thorough physical examination from head to toe, not, not just concentrating on the foot. The role of a prenatal ultrasound uh, is. Um, is uh, depicted in the in the slide there. So during the first trimester, uh, you can actually pick up associated anomalies because uh, some of the club foot is associated with uh, with other syndromes. And then in second trimester, that's when you can pick up the true club club feet. And in the third trimester, there is a high false false positive false false positive, false positive rate uh, because uh, of um, uh, intrauterine crowding. Then uh, uh, that uh, ultrasound is just to show a, a club foot uh, in uter, as, as, as depicted by the, by the arrow there. Then uh, radiographs are rarely taken, but if uh, they are taken, the recommended views are the takeoff view, which is a dorsiflexion um, uh, lateral view. Uh, which uh, shows a hind foot parallelism. As you can see, the, the talus and the, the calcaneus are almost parallel to each other. And the talocalcaneal angle, that's the, the angle that is created by lines that are bisecting the long axis of the talus and that of the calcaneus uh, is uh, less than 25. Normally, uh, it should be uh, between uh, uh, 35 and 50. And then uh, there's also a flat uh, talar head. Then the anterior posterior view, you also see uh, a hind foot uh, parallelism. Uh, and then the kite angle, which is the angle between the long axis of the, of the, of the talus and that of, uh, of the calcaneus is uh, less than 20 degrees. And this is normally uh, 20 to 40. 25 to 40, sorry. And then if it's less than 20, then you can diagnose um, um, uh, club foot. The negative uh, talus first metatarsal angle. As you can see in a normal foot, the, the angle between the long axis of the first metatarsal and that of the, of the um, talus is uh, in the positive. But when it is uh, in a club foot, it, it falls into the into the negative as depicted by by that R. In terms of uh, classification or grading, we commonly use the Pirani for monitoring treatment and early progress. And uh, the other uh, uh, classification or grading systems are also mentioned for completeness, but we will discuss uh, probably the Pirani. So the Pirani scoring basically measures. Um, six parameters which are graded uh, from zero to one, from zero being normal, 
0 0.5 being a mild abnormality and uh, 1 being a severe abnormality. There is a midfoot contracture score, uh, which measures uh, the curved uh, uh, lateral border uh, and uh, the medial crease, as well as the lateral head of the talus. And then there's the hind foot contracture score, which measures the posterior crease, the rigid, uh, rigid finus, and uh, an empty heel. So for the lateral border, you can place uh, uh, a straight, um, uh, you can draw a straight line of, uh, on the on the curve lateral border. So if uh, the line or if uh, and it is um, uh, abutting the the fifth meter 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 tassel uh, or fifty fifty toe, it's a it's a normal uh, foot. And then if the curve starts just midway uh, uh, along the lateral border, then it's a it's a mild zero point five. And if it is starting quite uh, proximally at the calcaneal cubital, uh, cuboidal joint, and it's, it's a one. Then uh, the medial crease. Um, so if there are multiple uh, fine creases that do not alter the shape of the foot, then it's a zero. Or, but if there are one or two deep creases, uh, which do not cause is significant, that's a mild, uh, and that's a 0 0.5. But if there are deep creases with the uh, 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 covers as, as, as noted there in one, then it, it becomes a one. Then uh, the lateral head of the talus, uh, if you can palpate completely uh, the head of the talus, uh, then that's a one, that's the severest form. But if you can palpate it partially, uh, it's a 0 0.5. If it's not palpable, that's very normal. That is zero. Uh, and the posterior fold, again, like uh, the medial crease, uh, uh, if, it, if it's a multiple fine creases, zero. Uh, one or two deep creases uh, with no, um, <coughs> which not uh, uh, actually, for, uh, 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 you can visibly see a deformity on the, on the, on the posterior aspect, then it's, it's a, 0 0.5. If you can see a deformity, that's a one. Then um, palpation of calcaneus in the in the heel, you cannot uh, palpate it at all. It's a one. That's the severest form. And if you can you can palpate it, uh, the contents probably is that like that of, of the nose, and it's a 0 0.5. And if you can easily palpate it, like you can palpate on your forehead, then it's a zero. And uh, in terms of the equinus, the last one, uh, if uh, you can flex it in neutral, uh, that is 0 0.5, that's the mild, the mildest. If it cannot be flexed at all, that's the severest, that's the equinus. And if there's some degree of restriction, it's a zero, that, that, that's normal. That's all about the Pirani scoring. Move on now to treatment uh, and uh, our, our, our guest is going to, to take us through this way of a summer the, the, the uh, and operative treatment and non-operative is the, um, the the basis of treatment for 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 most of the club food and of the non-operative method the concept method is the gold standard in most of the world and it, it results in greater than 90 percent success rate in avoiding extensive search for this. But for completeness sake, the other methods are mentioned, the French method and the, and the kite method. I will hand over to, to, to um, the next presenter.